everybody again. We do want to thank Zay for coming and his pastor and uh, the good looking dude there next to him. <laughs> but we do want to welcome everybody. We got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we got six pastors up in here tonight. Praise God. You know, you know uh, last Saturday night we went to a, a Forgiven Through Christ. There was eight different recovery ministries represented that night. I think we had 102 praising and worship Jesus. Man, it was, it was a pretty awesome thing. But I want to clarify something. I didn't clarify myself earlier when I said I was in my bunk. That I just, you know, sometimes, you know, what we've got to do is be quiet and just listen to God. Because I believe in my spirit there's some, something. Yeah, she's dinging me. But anyways, uh, maybe that was my time was up. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, maybe there's something in my life that I need to repent for. I'm sure there is stuff we get down inside. We kind of forget, or or we kind of tell God, "Is that really sin? Did I do?" You know, surely that's all right, Lord. You know what? If it don't line up in here right off the bat, it's it's sin. It's something you need to get rid of. So there might be something in the last 20 years of my serving Christ that maybe I need to to bring to the forefront. Maybe I just need to... And, and my prayer this morning was, God, bring to me whatever would hinder me from serving you to the best of my ability. Because I just want to serve God. I want to serve Him. I want to worship Him. I want to praise Him. I'm no different than anybody out there. You know, if you told me four years ago I'd be up here doing anything like this, I'd be telling you, you're crazy. I'm one of the shyest guys there is. And... Uh, but God always calls people to do stuff. So remember tonight, I don't know what it is, but Zay's got something for us tonight. I'm believing God's got something for us. And I, I really believe it. So Shaz, make it come and worship and praise. Amen. Uh, everyone would like to stand with me and worship with me. That would be awesome. Because I believe that you know, worship ushers in the presence of God. Amen. And worship isn't about a song. It's about what's in our hearts and what we thank Him for and what He brings into the room and what He does in our lives. So I just want y'all to remember that. <laughs>
important song because that's one of my favorite songs. It says, Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. My Savior's cross has set the sinner free. Amen. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I get so emotional, but I think I'm just, Jesus I'm just so talking about my Savior. Amen. Amen. I know we know I, I can't I don't have the best voice when I can sing when I'm crying. But um just here's the words. It says hope has a name and his name is Jesus. My Savior's cross has set the sinner free. So can we just let me just call them? <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. Has a name and his name is Jesus. My Savior's cross has But you know, I still worship God. I, I worship Him because I love Him so much. Even I can't sing. But you know, when, when it goes from heaven, I mean from earth to heaven, I guarantee you, God enjoys it. Because He has the praise of His people. So we want to welcome Zane tonight. Zane, I'm in. Zane, Clark. Like I said, I met him. Uh, I seen him, Zane. I met him... Uh, didn't really meet him at uh, Jesus Fest, but I heard him preach. I heard him, uh, he sung a little bit. But uh, I've been watching him. And man, I'll tell you, he's a man of God. That's what I believe. He's a man of God. So that's why I asked him to come and speak. But I asked him also to pray, and he did. And, and I know he's got some for us. So Zay, come and share whatever God's got for us. Amen. Can we give God a hand of praise? I'm glad y'all gave me a hand, but can we give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Amen. Our Savior and our Redeemer. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this real quick, and I hope she can hear me. Uh, Shazmika said that she's going to turn her back to y'all. Oh my goodness, I almost had a Holy Ghost fit when she said it. Because a lot of times what we do is we get in the habit of trying to entertain people for Jesus. But worship is for the Father and the Father only. So when we worship, we're worshiping together. So excuse her if she was worshiping the Father and you just got a chance to watch. 
That show wasn't for you. That was for Jesus. She only had one audience member, and he paid the price for her sins. So excuse her. Can we give her another hand for turning her back? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I get, I get real mad when it comes to tradition and all of that good stuff. People start trying to find out what's the best worship song for people to get up. No, the best worship song, we need to ask the Holy Spirit what he wants to hear that Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I have come to, to give you guys a word, but I just want to sing this song, and it's one of my favorite songs, and I just hope you guys know it. It's by a man uh, named Crowder. He has a beard that hangs all the way down to his chest. Y'all know that guy? Amen. All right. If I can get my phone to go good here.
have been forgiven I was just telling my brother earlier that Jesus didn't say it is finished because he was just joking around he said it is finished because he reconciled you back unto the father what Adam lost Jesus gained somebody give God a hand of praise for our Lord and Savior Jesus who with all our hope is in I want to say just a, a, a little bit of Theological, you know, if, if somebody's a Bible scholar in here and they want to, you know, do a whole bunch of fact checking and all that. Um, one thing that the early century church did, they did a lot of scholarship, they went to school and different things like that, right? Um, one of the schools was the school of Antioch. I'm not going to do this long, it's just preliminary stuff, right? The school of Antioch was ran by um, the Apostle Mark or St. Mark. And the school of Alexander was ran by uh, Peter. But the school of Alexander did more of a spiritual teaching. But the school at Antioch did a more literal teaching. What exactly what the Bible is saying. Don't take, don't take from it, don't add to it. But there's a spiritual application to everything that Jesus says. So I'm going to be speaking also naturally, but also spiritually. Because we know that our bodies are natural, but we have been saved by the Holy Spirit. So, so then, that means that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. I'm going to say that again. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. The Bible says before the foundations of the earth, we existed or were chosen. Let me say that again. We were chosen in Christ. So how do you have an existence if you were chosen in Christ before the foundations of the earth? Um, most theologians would agree that we were chosen in Christ because we existed in the plan. Somebody say plan. plan. In the will. Somebody say will. will. And in the thought of God. So we existed in the plan, the will, and the thought of God. So before David was this handsome fella that he is, so before Brother Chris, where's Brother Chris? Did he leave? He's right there. Before Brother Chris was as handsome as he is, before his wife was as beautiful as she is, God had a plan for her before the foundations of the world were formed. Does that make sense? I need you to understand that everything that God has for you in your life that is going to come to pass and is going to manifest in your life from this day forward, he already planned it and had it in his will. He already made provision. The word pro means before and the word vision or video means to see beforehand. He's already seen beforehand the struggles of things that you're going to go through. He went ahead of you. Amen. And made it right for you before you even got there. Amen. All right. And this is all this is all preliminary stuff. We know that God is omnipresent. But we we kind of we don't we don't tell the full definition of that of that of that of, of omnipresence. Omnipresent not only means that he's in Arkansas and California at the same time, but it also means that he's in 730 and in 830 at the same time. So the God in 730 is the same God that's in 830. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. I'm telling you that before you make it to tomorrow, he's already made it there. So I'm going to scream to the God of tomorrow, please help me tomorrow because my boss gets on my last nerves. Please, because my kids don't like to clean up when they get home. It's not even Friday yet, but can you please give me patience to deal with my husband because he talks too much. Okay? So we can talk to the God of tomorrow by telling him what we're going through today. Oh my goodness, I feel like preaching already. So, so, so I want you to understand something before I say anything is that I, I preach a really big God, a really big Jesus, and a very tiny devil. Amen. Yes. Come on. Sorry for people that love how big the devil is. He's not very big because Jesus defeated him and he's yes. just a defeated foe. And because, because of that reason, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Yes. Do we know? Okay. I, I have got to preach. I'm doing too much preliminary stuff. This is where my wife would come in. She would tell me to preach, boy. 
But she, she's not here, so I don't have to go as long as I want. Okay. She watching though. She is watching, right? Crap. Hey, babe, how you doing? I didn't admit what I said. Um, that was that was that wasn't. I would. That's it. I love you. Who said that? Smart man, sir. Um, what was I saying? More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Um, we, we're familiar with the story of David and the, the battle of Judah when they got everything stolen from them, right? They got everything stolen from them and they went back to conquer everything that the enemy took. But the men were the ones that went to fight for the stuff that was stolen, right? But the women and children were called more than conquerors because they, were, they didn't even lift a finger. You're more than a conqueror because you didn't even lift a finger to the victory that you obtained. Amen. Right, sir. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I feel like preaching. You, you, you already obtained victory, but you didn't even lift a finger. The Bible says that this battle is not ours, but it is the Lord's. He's the mighty axe. He's the conqueror. He's the keeper. He's the redeemer. We did not redeem ourselves, for he has made us more than conquerors. Somebody say more than conquerors. More than conquerors. So I'm going to read this, this text, and uh, this, it's a very familiar passage of Scripture. Don't do that. Sometimes you got to speak over your technology and rebuke it. And see, when you do it, it works. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to uh, Luke chapter 15. Verse 11, this is a very familiar passage. Um, the prodigal son, prodigal son. Um, Luke talks more about lost things. Talks more about lost things. We, we know the story of the lost coin. The woman who lost the coin. And then uh, the story of the, of, the, of the 100 sheep and the one sheep got lost and he went after, he went after the, the lost sheep. Luke deals with a lot of lost things. I don't know about you, but I've been lost before. Amen. Amen. All right. I've, I've been lost before. I, I don't know. I, I didn't really come to just talk to Perfect Patty. I didn't come to talk to Terrific Tiffany. Nor did I come to talk to Bonafide Bill. I came to talk to Broke Down Susan, Bad Dad, Bad Dad Bobby. I came to talk to, I came to talk to Dirty Diana. Anybody ever heard of her? Michael Jackson talked about her. But that's who we come to deliver tonight. I didn't come to talk to any perfect people. I came to talk to some people that know that they have some things going on in their life. And Jesus is the cure. I just stole that from you. I'm going to use it again. <laughs> so verse, verse 11 of chapter 15. And he said, a certain man who had two sons. And the younger son, then he said to his father, Father, give me my portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days somebody said not long oh. <laughs> he didn't take long and not many days after the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a far country anybody ever seen Forrest Gump when Jenny said far far away <laughs> to a far country and there he wasted his substance on riotous Living. Now I want to skip down to verse, verse 15. Verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a certain citizen. <laughs> Somebody say a partner in crime. <laughs> to a certain citizen of that country and sent him into the field with the swine. And he would fain and have his belly filled with the husk that the swine did eat. Ooh, talk about a hefty diet, right? And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, you must be a preacher because you're smiling. That's, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. When he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. Amen. Amen. I will arise. Now, now, who is in this field or pen of pigs with him? 
pigs, and himself. So we can assume that the prodigal son was talking to himself. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 17 that he came to himself. Verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father's, to my father, and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and no more war than to be, be called thy son. Ooh. Make as one thy hired servant. I'm, I'm going I'm to stop there, and I'm going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would just come into this room and speak through me, oh God. Thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us and your multitudes of tender mercy. But it is right now, your people need a word. So God, those who may visually look this way, I ask that you hide me behind the cross. Oh God, right now, use me as your vessel. Use me as your, as you will, God, because you preach much better than I do. So get Zay out of the way and allow yourself to increase in me as I decrease in flesh. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider up. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again Y'all have heard of that nursery rhyme before, right? So that's not something that you guys never heard before, right? Everybody's heard that, about the itsy bitsy spider. This itsy bitsy spider decided to walk up the water spout and then the rain Washed him out. But as soon as the sun came out, the spider tried it again. I want to tell you that that spider had some confidence that a lot of us lack. As soon as we fall, I'm not going back up that spout. I won't be going back up because the storm and the rain will wash me right back out. But I'm telling you, as long as the Son of God, the Son of Man is in your life, He's going to dry up every little piece of rain in your life and He's going to allow you to climb back. So we don't have control over the rain, but we sure enough have control of our climb. Yes. We don't have control of the climate, but we have control of our climb. I decide to climb and get as close to Jesus as I can. I'm like the woman with the issue of blood. I can't control my blood flow. I can't control the trouble I go through. But one thing I can do, I can control how I'm going to crawl. She decided that whatever rain comes, my grandmama would say it like this. She said, come hell or hot water. I'm going to get to Jesus. I don't know who is going through anything right now, but I'm telling you, if you are letting a spider climb the, the spout more than you, you got to understand that you have more to do than just a spider. Come on. Amen. <laughs> And if, and if anybody in this room are, is going to say that I'm going to control how I'm going to crawl after Jesus, though things get in my way, though I'm, I'm downtrodden, though I may be cast down, but I'm not in despair, whatever I go through, it's not going to separate me from the love of God. Amen. A lot of times we find ourselves in places where we don't understand our identity. We don't understand who we are in Christ. Just as I told you before, the Bible said that in Ephesians 1 and 4, it said that we were chosen in Christ before the foundations of the earth. So being that we were chosen in Christ before the foundations of the earth, that means that God has given us a position that we did not know about until we hit the earth realm. I'm going to say that again. We had a position in Christ because Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Sitting in the place of honor. So when you are in Christ, you are sitting in the place of honor. The angels, the Bible says, are eagerly watching us as we obtain our salvation. 
So if the angels are taking their eyes off of heaven and putting their eyes on us, we have a position or a importance in Christ. But we don't have this importance on our own. We have this importance through him to what we have obtained in salvation. So your salvation is how you obtain your promises. Your salvation is how you overcome your troubles. The moment you come into Christ, you have the strength to overcome. Jesus said in John 16, 33, take heart for I have overcome the world. But what happens to us is we don't have, my first point, we don't have proper perspective. We don't have proper perspective. Perspective is how you look at a thing or how you see a thing. The Bible says, out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart speaks. I can tell the position of your heart by what comes out of your mouth. So, so the moment that I hear you speak, I know exactly what's in your heart. But a lot of times what we like to do, I call it pulpit pretenders and pew perpetrators. We like to pretend and put on this facade, like how are you doing brother Zay? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, but I, they don't know that I just tried to commit suicide three weeks ago. Because the church is the only army that when they see a wounded soldier that they talk about the wounds. When is it going to be when we are lifting each other up in Christ? Because the moment some of us find ourselves in places of addiction, find ourselves in places of depression, we talk about the person and we say that they weren't really saved in the first place. They, 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 they weren't really saved in the first, I'm getting to the prodigal son. They, 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 weren't really, they weren't really saved in the first place, but the Bible says that he told Nicodemus, what must I do to be saved? He said, let's, let's, let's do spiritual thinking on this, right? He said, I must be, you must be born again. How many of us were born mature? Nobody. <laughs> how many of us, how many of us were born men, born women. No, you were born a girl or a boy. You were, you were babies, right? So when your mother birthed you or, or allowed you to come through the birth canal, there were certain things about you that you couldn't control. <coughs> Y'all don't like this. Okay. So, so I understand. I understand that when a person is born into salvation, there's some things that they're going to have to get control of. But how many of us, if we saw a woman with a baby in Walmart, she's in the bathroom, hey, how you doing, ma'am? I'm doing fine. This darn baby just keeps on crapping on itself. This is the fifth time today. This doesn't, and she's looking at, this doesn't make any sense. You're only two minutes old. You should have been done, got this down by now. I bought diapers after diapers after, you looking at that woman like, oh my God, she's nuts. <laughs> Because you understand that, oh, this isn't a bad place to say this, you understand that baby, babies poop on themselves. <laughs> you follow me? Babies use the restroom on themselves. But what has to happen is, we have to find out where the nurturers are. Where are the nurturers? Pastor David's a nurturer. His wife is a nurturer. You got to find a nurturer because there's some people that think when you get saved, you got it all together on the first day. But excuse me if I fall a few times, but every time I fall, I'm going to get back up again because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them out of them all. So excuse me if I'm a baby in Christ and I just so happen to poop on myself a little bit. Send them to Pastor, send them to Pastor David. Send them to me. Send them to my pastor because we understand that sometimes those who are babes in Christ need nourishment. We don't have proper, first point, proper perspective. We don't see them as babes. We see them as complete. Because the church has taught us how to look 
but not how to live. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason why, and it's just embedded into me, the reason why I wear these here fancy shoes, because my daddy did. He was a preacher, and, and anytime he preached a good word, I was tall enough to just look at his shoes. Man, he's really preaching. <laughs> so then when God called me to the ministry, I said, I'm going to give me some fancy shoes. All right. Because I was more in tune to the look. Hey, that, hey, she looks like she's saved. We call it sanctified from where, where I'm from. She looks like she's saved and sanctified. Huh? She looks like she's got it going on. But the moment we see somebody like that fall, we call their salvation a facade. Oh, man, y'all don't like this. I, it's okay. I know your jaw's a little tight, but I just got to tell the truth because we got to come out of this traditional mindset to where people cannot come in sick. Why in the world is Unity Health thriving so good? Want to know why Mayo Clinic is just like the, one of the best places to go because they know how to handle sick people. Come on in. You got cancer? Come on in. You know how many, and they got this little thing on the, on the oh, I can't, I don't want to say the percentage wrong, but it's above 50%. They show you, we, we, this many people have recovered. And when you come in, we, we, you see all these kids, all these kids recovered and all these grown people recovered because the church is the only hospital where you got to come in already cured. How is Jesus the cure for somebody that pretends they're not sick? Right. The reason why Jesus is the cure here at Chrissy's house is because somebody comes in sick. Just like the prodigal son, he just, he just knew. I can take everything that I got, all the great, that, that inheritance, that inheritance, my brothers and sisters, Oh man, I wish I had my screen. I should have done that. Don't worry about it. Uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 1.14 says the Holy Spirit is the seal. I was giving you my sermon, bro. <laughs> it's the seal and the, uh, the promise to our inheritance. What is our inheritance? A part of our inheritance is grace. That, that God gives us the, per it's called his permissive will. Now, his preferred will and permissive will is two different things. Now, God does not prefer that you smoke cigarettes. doesn't prefer that. But if you want to do that, it's free will and he permits it. Yeah, sure, that's what you want to do with it. He doesn't, per he doesn't prefer that we do some of the things that we do. But he says, you know what, if that's what you want, I'll permit it. Say that one more time, bro. One more You're talking to me. Okay. No, 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 no. You are. No, 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 no. Okay. Good. <laughs> but the permissive, but the permissive will and the preferred will, and let me and let me tell you this. Let me let me let me set you free. Let me set you free. Because, again, how to look, but not how to live. There was a young man, we were in a Bible study in Augusta. This is not even in my notes. We were in Augusta, we were in a Bible study, and there was a young man that stood up and said, I smoke cigarettes. There was a lady, Pentecostal fire. She sent them, you know where, she sent them straight to where nobody wants to go. She sent them straight there. That's where you're going if you're, and the Bible does not say that those things will send us there. But it is a consequence of things that we come into when we do those things. Now, Christ can cover, the Bible says that the spirit of love can cover a multitude of faults. But we have to understand that those things can block us from the love of God. You don't understand that sometimes you think, okay, I gotta have, I gotta have my pornography, I got to have my fix, I got to go, I got to go fornicate, and you're doing all these things, and all these things are happening into you, but you don't understand that you're giving your peace to something else. You're getting your peace through another, another avenue that is not Jesus Christ. 
So what happens is you have the consequence of pornography. The consequence of pornography is, is that every time you're walking around, you're looking at everybody and you see them naked in your head. Y'all don't like that. So what happens is when you walk around and you need a drink, every time you walk around and you need a drink, you're fidgeting and you're having withdrawals. Why? Because there's certain things that are in you that are telling you to go get your piece at the bottom of a Jack Daniels bottle. Go get your piece at the end of a blunt, but you must go get your peace from Jesus. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. There's consequences to sin. And that consequence is separation. The Bible says, the Bible says that the wages, the wages or the workings or the payout, the paycheck for sin is death. Now that's not literal death. In the Greek, that word death literally means that it is separating you. All right, all right. Uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says to, says to, says to, man, I'm, I'm, casting down imaginations that exalt itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity everything into the obedience of Christ. Now come here. I need two brothers right here. I'm going to tell you what this scripture is saying. Can y'all come here? Now watch this. This, this is my I'm sorry. I, no, 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 no. I don't know your name, but I'm going to make you a character. This is my addiction to pornography right here. Stop, guys. Jeez. Alright. Alright. This is my addiction to marijuana. I'm telling you my testimony right now. All right, uh, I need you. This, this is me having a child out of wedlock and I was a preacher's son and I want everybody to understand that hey, I'm not gonna bring my child to, to oh God, let me testify. You wanna, you wanna talk about cigarettes, honey? You wanna talk about cigarettes? Watch this, I had a child out of wedlock and I didn't wanna bring my two month old daughter to church. You want, you, want to, you want to talk about I know how to make it look good Okay, listen You gotta keep her here Because if they see, the, if they see this Then they're going to think that I'm not saved So I'm going to keep it together As long as, because I'm a preacher son I can't, I can't, y'all can't see that But I didn't understand that God can, can use what the devil meant for bad And turn it into good That was the greatest gift that God gave to me But my first point is proper perspective Proper perception. My perception was off. That's a mistake. Oh, God, it's a baby. I had it at 20, and I'm not married to the girl. Oh, it's a mistake. I'm not saved. Oh, my God. And now I'm hiding my child. Because I want people to think that I'm saved. Instead of saying, Jesus, what can you do about this? I need some curing going on because I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. This is making this is making me sick. Can you turn this around for me? Go back to my point, right? Pornography, marijuana, what people think about me. These are all thoughts that exalt itself above the uh, above the the knowledge of God. Now, this is standing in the way of me and God. I feel like, hey, God, I can't get to you because you know. Especially this big one right here. Yeah, can't get to you. Separate me. Now God, now, now listen, listen. I want you to understand, God doesn't separate himself from you. You separate yourself from him. All right? The Bible says Jesus told the disciples, as an example of salvation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He didn't say, behold, I stand at the door and turn the knob. No. He knocks. It's our job to turn the knob. Amen. I didn't try to make that rhyme, but it did. It's our job to turn the knob. Say, it's my job, my job. to turn the knob. Amen. All right. Now, now, God is right here. He's doing this. If you just let me in on it, right? So, so what I have to do is with all this stuff, the Bible says take into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. Now one translation in the New Tri Living Translation, look it up sister, it says that you are to teach those thoughts who Christ is. Now this is what you need to do to your thoughts right here. 
I can't make it up. It's in the Bible. Every thought, y'all take a seat. Every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, every time one of those thoughts creep in, I'm going to give you a high chair. Right? When those thoughts come against you, the Bible says that you just take them into captivity. They're in my bondage now. They had me bound, but I got them bound. Listen, you suckers. I am not going to be dealing with you for the rest of my life. I'm sick and tired, not of you, but I'm talking to my thoughts right now. Excuse me, I'm talking to myself. I don't care what people think about me because I've been chosen in Christ. Hey, Mr. Marijuana, how are you doing? I'm going to cast you out with prayer. I'm getting up every morning, and as soon as I start fidgeting and want to smoke one of you, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to start speaking in tongues. I'm going to start shouting the victory. So guess what, Mr. Marijuana? You can't come back. Hey, how are you doing, Mr. Pornography? Listen. I'm married now and what I got to do is get every rock I got off on my wife and I'm not going to get it off on you. You got to obey Christ and there's nothing you can do about it. So sit down, shut up, don't say nothing because I got a life to live. Don't move because if you move, I'm casting you out. Are they moving? I, you, be, you better not, you better not move you a dick. You bet you, if you move, Bruce, man. look at somebody and say, get yourself somewhere and sit down. Y'all done seen the deal. Get your, get your thoughts. The Bible literally says it. Taking them into captivity and telling them to obey Christ. Obey me, thoughts. Sit down. I, talk, I just get real animated. I'm sorry. So, so the name of my sermon is Excuse me, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> That's a nail on my sermon. Excuse me, I'm talking to myself. My addictions, I'm talking to them. Having a good old conversation with the things I'm addicted to. The reason why they're, they're taking over your life is because you haven't talked to them yet. You're not commanding them yet. You've been talking to them. Yeah, you've been talking to them, but you've been fellowshipping with them. You've been, you've, been, you've been having deep conversations. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. I really do appreciate you for making me feel better. Come on, y'all. I like dog. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about now. Y'all don't move. The rest of the sermon, my thoughts are gonna sit right here and let me preach. For the rest of your life, your thoughts are going to sit right there and watch you live for Jesus, watch you lay hands on the sick, watch you come to this house right here and allow people to get their recovery. So sit, don't you say it. Thought you said something. <laughs> so we look at this text, we look at this text, and in verse, watch this, watch this. In verse 15, chapter 15, verse 15. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now, the, the natural application to this is that he just found somebody to talk to. Just found somebody to talk to. That's the natural application. Wherever he was, whatever region he was in, Jesus gives this parable. And we just have to guess what Jesus was talking about and just say he just met somebody. That's the natural application. But the spiritual application is that you find somebody that's just worse off as you. Misery enjoys company. So when you see people coming out of the mess that they're in, we see people saying, you know what? I listened to Pastor David and, and, and I told my, my addiction to sit down. I told my addictions to sit down. I, I, I told, I, I, one time I almost, I almost did something that I had no business, but I told it to sit, sit down. I brought it into captivity under the obedience of Christ. But then, somebody else hears that, I don't want to be around her, she's a holy roller. <laughs> she's trying to get herself together and all that, she thinks she's better than everybody else. I'm going to go find somebody that's, that's just as addicted as I am and, you know, we can smoke together and go half on it, you know? <laughs> because, 
He had to find somebody to share it with. He had to find somebody to share his pain with, share his addiction with, share his depression with. Because we understand that hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hang with other hurt people. But guess what? I found out something. Delivered people hang with other delivered people. Saved people hang with other saved people. Redeemed people hang with other redeemed people. So if everybody in your circle is redeemed, you ought to thank God for that. But right now, I want you to start divorcing everything that is not like God out of your life. Divorce your troubles. Divorce your transgression. Divorce your sin. Because you cannot hold on to that and still be holding on. To God. Because, where was he? He was in mud. I got to go. I'm, I feel like I'm up here too long. Where was he? He was in mud. He was in mud. Now, again, literally, naturally, he was in mud. Mama, that's what he was in. The boy was in mud, and they're trying to give you a description. Jesus is painting this picture to try to give you a description of how bad off he was. But the spiritual application to this what is mud made of? What are the, what are the characteristics or the, the things that make up mud? Water and dirt. Who said that? Agriculture guy right there. Water and dirt. Dust and water. What was man made of? The dust. Jesus says in John 7, 37, that the Holy Spirit is the water. So when you try to mix God and your dust together, you get mud. David said, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. That word clean means one track. Give me a one track heart. I don't want everything in it. I just want you in it. My daughter is just so peculiar. And she, she asked me a question one day, and, and it blew my mind. And it made me, helped me understand what David meant by a clean heart, right? So she took a shower, and she, we call it a big towel. Daddy, give me a big towel because I got to dry off, right? So she looks at me and says, Dad, where's the, where's the, where's the basket? I want to put, put this in the, in the thing. I said, yeah, just put it over there. Just put it in the dirty clothes. And she looked at me when she got done. She picked up the towel and says, how is this towel dirty? I said, that's a good question. Because then I start saying to myself, it's a clean towel. My daughter is clean. She just washed herself off. So how can a clean towel wipe a clean body and you put it in the dirty clothes? We've been doing it wrong for years. Wow. But no, the towel is dirty. Why? Because it's not by itself anymore. It's towel and water. So anything you put on the towel, it makes the towel dirty. So anything you put in your heart that's not like God, it makes your heart dirty. Who riding dirty? Anybody riding dirty? I've been, I've, I've been riding dirty all my life, say, and I'm just telling you, this thing has just got, I, I can't shake it. My, my daddy was like this. My grandma was like this. I'm telling you that Jesus is able to break generational curses. I'm going to tell you how I know, because he came down through 42 of them, breaking the generational curses of Moses, breaking the generational curses of David, breaking the generational curses of Joseph and Solomon. Every generational curse, Jesus broke it. So don't tell me that you been dirty too long because I'm telling you any spot blemish or wrinkle it was cleaned up by the blood because that's what he's coming back for a church without spot blemish or wrinkle and he cleaned it up with his blood cleaned is that a word cleaned it up but a lot of a lot of times we look at these things and watch, watch how the prodigal son operates. He says that he was with somebody that was going through the same thing as him. So then watch. He began to feed off of things that the swines were eating. Somebody say appropriate appetite. Second point. I got three points and I'm going to leave. My second point is having the appropriate 
appetite. Somebody say appropriate, appropriate. appetite. <laughs> Having the appropriate desires. He said he'll give you the desires of your heart. But, your, but the desires of your heart have to be in him. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his way of doing things or his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. But what you're trying to do, you're trying to get the blessings without seeking the blessor. Yes. Amen. You're, try, you're trying to get the resources and not going to the source. So what you must do is, my brothers and sisters, in order for us to be free and free indeed, we got to get to the Son. We got to get to Jesus. But do not allow yourself to think just because you did something wrong and the devil will play tic-tac-toe with your mind and tell you that you're not good enough to go to Jesus because of what you did last night, because of what you did three hours ago, because of what you did ten minutes ago. But the same God that has healed me today, yesterday, and forevermore, the same God that's going to get me through my right now. Amen. Amen. You are in this building. And this building is in BB. BB is in Arkansas. Arkansas is in the United States. The United States is in a continent called North America. North America is on the Earth, and the Earth is in a galaxy called the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is in the universe, and the universe is in God, and God is in you, and you're in BB. Amen. BB is in Arkansas, and Arkansas is, is, is in the United States, and the United States is in a continent called North America, and North America is in... Is, 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 is on the earth and the earth is in a galaxy called the Milky Way and the Milky Way is in the universe and the universe is in God and God is in you. The Bible says, you, you, oh, he's just making that up. Where did he get that from? I'm telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All of creation groaneth Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. All of, all of the stars, all of the cosmos, all of the deer, all, everything that we see in the world, they're literally waiting for us. Anticipating it. Anticipating it. All eyes are on you and me. But what are you going to do with the salvation that you've inherited from Jesus Christ? <laughs> The prodigal son used his grace or used his freedom, whom the son sets free, is free indeed. Used his freedom on lucidious living. I'm asking you a question. What are you going to do with the salvation that you have received? So what does he do? The Bible says he comes to himself, and I'm almost finished. So we got proper perception appropriate appetite but what he does is he comes back comes back to the father the moment you realize that you've been doing things that are not of God because he came back and he said I'm not even worthy to be a servant like give me like a low position when I come back <coughs> it's not how God works right. he was showing you that at the moment you come back you are exalted above all. He stops everything in the house. Some theologians would agree that they had a, they had a multi-million dollar business going on at the house. Cattle and goods and things like that. Agriculture. He stopped everybody. Hey, my son is back. Y'all quit doing what you're doing. Everybody stop. That is literally the world stopping when somebody gets their salvation back. Literally the world stopping. When you come back to Jesus, the entire world stops for a moment. And heaven rejoices. Because I want you to, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, my daughter is like a prophet. Because she told me something again. Everything, I, I see so many things. I hear God through everything. I, I literally be looking at the back, uh, back of a bottle of Sprite and see some nutrients called and flee below and, I, and I'll make a word out of it. It's crazy. God speaks to me through everything. So watch. She tells me one day, and I'm talking about the prodigal son. She tells me one day that she loses this North Face jacket when Hayes was open and they were selling those jackets for two and three hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. 
It's a lot of money for a little bitty jacket. Anyway, so she bought the jacket and she got so afraid that she lost the jacket. She goes, Dad, I lost my jacket. I said, well, okay, we're not going to tell your mama, so just go ahead and try to find the jacket, okay? So she comes back, eyes blue, right, looking at me. Dad, I didn't find my jacket. I scratch my head again, I'm like, man, that's a word. She goes, no, it's not, Dad, you're always doing this. It's not, I'm not trying to preach, I really lost my jacket. I'm like, okay. I, told, I said to myself, she's still using the possessive pronoun. My, even though the jacket was lost. Even though the jacket was not in her possession, she still possessed it. The son thought that he lost his sonship because he did some things that he had no business doing. The son thought that he loved him. I'm not yours anymore, Dad. He said, just make me, look at the language. Just make me a servant. I'm not your son, though. Just make me a servant. I lost, I lost my sonship. I lost that. I lost that. I did too much. I, you, did you, I, mean, I bet he brought some pigs back with him. Hey, tell him what I did. Tell him I was out there eating with y'all, man. Pig just sitting there oinking himself to death and nobody can understand what he's saying. And I can imagine the prodigal son came back, and I'm finished. The prodigal son came back with mud on him, mud in his nails, mud in his, in, in his toenails, mud in his feet, grass in his hair. Coming back to the house, and he wasn't clean yet. But he still was a son. Dirty, full of filth, still a son still belong to the Father. He stopped everything for the dirty son. So I don't, want to, I don't want you to think ever in your life that you can do anything to separate you from the love of the Father. That's what this scripture was talking about. But are you going to have the proper perspective and the appropriate, the appropriate appetite or the appropriate desire when you come back to Him? Isn't it funny that buttermilk doesn't have butter in it? Isn't it funny that sock it to me cake really don't sock it to you? Isn't it funny that 7-Up cake, tried it, doesn't taste like 7-Up? But I don't want you to be like sock it to me cake. I don't want you to be like Buttermilk, having the name but not the substance. Right. Having the Holy Spirit but not being so holy. I got the Holy Spirit. Some folks say they have the Holy Spirit, they got a spirit, but they ain't holy. Amen. You got to understand that when the Holy Spirit encapsulates your life, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and I'm finished. I said that three times. Preacher gets three closes. It says, know ye now that your body is the temple of God. Just like I told you that the universe is in God and God is in you. The earth has to agree. My God, y'all, this is going to be a little crazy. The earth has to agree when you speak. The same Holy Spirit that gave Jesus the power to say, storm cease. The earth had to agree because the one with the authority spoke up. That same Holy Spirit that Jesus has, he allows it to encapsulate us. It's living on the inside of us. He says, I'll send you the comforter. And when the comforter comes, I and my father will make our home with thee. He literally has made his home in you. God has taken up residence in you. Preached a sermon not too long ago, the eviction notice of the enemy. God doesn't like roommates. He wants to live in there, him by himself. Don't allow anything else to live in there. Grudges. Racism. Yes, a black preacher said racism. None of that needs to live in you. 
None of that. Because God wants to live in you and you alone. He said that I am a jealous God and I desire that you have no other gods before me. No other deities, no other emotional ties, nothing before me. I want to be the lone ranger of your ranch. Amen. But we have to allow him to see us coming back home. Check this out. I said I was done. That's four. Check this out. And I'm gonna use, you can get up now. You're not, you're not marijuana anymore. <laughs> Amen. Marijuana has been delivered. Come on, give a hand to marijuana. So hold on, wait, come back, come back. I'm using it, I'm using it. Right. Just stand, stand over there. Stand over there. Like all the way on the other side of the stage. So <laughs> So what the father does, the father, you're the father, he sees the son coming. And instead of waiting for the son, instead of waiting for the son to come completely to the house, the Bible says, he met him. Come on, somebody ought to give God a hand to pray for you. Meet us. marijuana again, you can sit down. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But look at the beauty of that, that we have a God. Not like, not like Buddha, not like Muhammad, not like Confucius, not like Athanasius and all these other philosophers and all that. God literally wants to meet us when we start coming toward him. He's meeting us just like, just like you ever seen the movie when the woman meets the man and she starts spinning in the air. God wants to do that. It's a beautiful thing to come back. But once you come back, have the proper perception of who you are in Christ. If you understand who you are, the devil cannot rob you of your identity. The church, of, uh, sometimes our churches are in identity crisis because we don't know that we have the ability to overcome anything through the Holy Spirit that Jesus has given us. Amen. We can't, oh Lord have mercy. I gotta go, it's eight o'clock, I've been up for too long. But I want you to see something. If you have a, if you have a Bible, I got to set this down on this on this altar real quick. Because a lot of times what we get in the habit of we get in the habit of trying to scare the crap out of people and making them come to Jesus. Because the Bible says in Jeremiah 31 and 3, and I'm getting teary eyed. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31 and 3 that with thy love and kindness have I drawn thee. He draws us with his love and kindness. He draws us with his love and kindness. And John 16, John 16 and 8. John 16 and 8 says that the Holy Spirit is the one that will convict. So if you stand up and preach to anybody or witness to anybody, and in your mind, I got to convict them. The moment I convict them, they're going to want to get it right. But if you're convicting them, the Holy Spirit's not doing it. Because what we do is we try to intimidate people into coming, coming back to Jesus. So we give them the information of consequences, but not the intimidation of consequences. So nothing that I'm telling you right now is all about the drawing love of Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set you free tonight to let you know, just like the prodigal son, 
I want you to look at somebody next to you and say, hey, hey you, it's okay to talk to yourself. Come on, say it like you mean it. Come on, look at them right smack dab in the face and say, hey you, don't think I'm crazy when you see me talking to myself because all I'm doing is doing what the prodigal son did. I'm making sure that these thoughts of mine know who's boss. Amen. That this anger of mine knows who's boss. That this, that this depression that I'm, that I'm holding on to knows who's boss. This grudge that I'm holding against my mom, dad, brother, sister. Because they did something 10 years ago and I didn't like it. I don't talk to my dad no more. I don't talk to my sister. No. Take that grudge and sit it down and tell it who's boss. Amen. Because right now, I'm giving you the permission. Now it's going to get weird because you're, you're peculiar people. Get used to it. So, when, so if your car declines in Walmart and you're about to get mad, and you just start talking to yourself, the cashier's going to think you're crazy. But what you're doing is, baby, you ought to try it. That's what you should tell them. When your boss tells you to stay late, I've already worked my eight hours. Okay, I'll work. Are you crazy, Zay? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Sweetie, can you come in here and do the dishes? <sighs> Jesus, okay. Yeah, I'll do the dishes, baby. Immediately. Immediately start telling yourself exactly what God wants done in your life. Come on, give God a hand of praise. If anybody has anything they would like to bring to the altar. And let me tell you this, this is not a walk of shame, this is a walk of glory. Because the moment you place it at the altar, the old school song said, when I laid my burdens down, I left them right at the riverside. This river is the Holy Spirit. And anytime you lay your burdens down at the river, that's where they're gonna stay. Likewise, the Spirit helps us with our infirmities. So even if you don't want to come to the altar, we're just going to pray with you right here. If you would just lift your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray over every soul that is in this room right now. We pray over every heart that they will receive the continuing cure that saves, heals, and delivers. And that curious Jesus. Oh God, we may have done some things that are not so good in your sight, oh God. But you allowed us to come back to you with mud on us. Mud between our fingers, grass in our hair, transgression all over us, oh God. But you said that you would meet us halfway. God, we thank you for your word that allows us to understand that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Continue to draw us with your love. Continue to allow your love to overshadow us. Continue to allow your love to overtake our lives and to overtake our souls so that we may go tell a dying world that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, whom you have sent for the remission of our sins. We thank you for allowing him to take on our sin. He who was sinless took on every sin that the world would ever commit. We thank you that he stood on that cross. Not because the nails held him there, oh God. But because his love held him on that cross. And God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the keeper, the convictor, the guide. 
that you have given us in the Holy Spirit. Because that same Holy Spirit that rested and ruled and abided in Jesus Christ, we now have that same Holy Spirit that's available to us. So we ask that the Holy Spirit will reign fresh in every heart in this room, every life, every marriage of God. We turn the knob on our trouble so you can come in and fix it. We turn the knob on everything that is not like you so you can come in and turn over the tables of everything that is not like you. We want to let you in to our earthly temples so that you can clean it out again. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have given us another chance, not just a second chance, but another chance, chance after chance. Oh God, we thank you for your forgiveness that you have given us and that forgiveness is of heaven. So God, right now we pray for every one that is dealing with a fleshly affirmity right now. We pray that the backbone of that addiction is broken, that the backbone of that depression is broken right now. In the name of Jesus, that, that everything that is not like you be broken right now. In the name of Jesus, every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God be cast down as we speak over it by the spirit of the living God, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, oh God. Break the back backbone of anything that may try to break us down. In the name of Jesus, close the mouth of our lion right now. Defeat our giants right now, oh God. Allow us to make it through the fiery furnace of our troubles. Allow us to make it through the fiery furnace of life. In the name of Jesus, and let us come out not smelling like smoke. We pray for every heart, soul, and mind. In the name of Jesus, devil, you have no authority. You have have no place and you have no power. Amen. God, we believe these things by your son Jesus' name, whom we have authority and power through. In Jesus' name we do pray. Come on, let us say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, give, you, give yourselves a hand of praise. Now give God a hand of praise. Come on, stand up on your feet if you receive the word tonight. If you receive the word of the Lord, I want you to just stand up on your feet and signify to the earth that the word of the Lord has went forth. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.